In Matthew 6, Jesus taught us how to pray, and he said, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Now, he made it clear that the kingdom of God was within the heart and life of every believer. And yet, even though Paul says it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, there is coming a day when that kingdom will be established on this earth earth and we are going to rule and reign with Christ. If there is a center or a headquarters for this spiritual kingdom in the earth, it must of necessity be in the midst of a nation of believers. And I want you to know that regardless of what you see on the six o'clock news or what you read in the newspaper, America is still Christian America. Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, I'm Pastor Sam, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. Do you know that God has a plan and a purpose for the very existence of the United States of America? I'm going to share with you today on the program some fascinating facts. There are things that used to be in our history books that have been taken out. There are some things that were never in the history books but they are factual just the same, that let us know that this nation was birthed in the very heart of God Almighty. So I want you to be sure to tell somebody right now to tune in, miracles still happen, because I'm telling you, this program will change your perspective as an American and especially as a Christian American. God has a plan and purpose for our nation in these last days. And as always, we'll come together at the end of the program for a very special prayer, so don't miss that. Now, call somebody and say, tune in. Miracles Still Happen is on right now. We're about to go into a service where the power of God is at work, and that service is already in progress.
you realize that Columbus didn't know what he was doing when he did it, but he was led by God? You see, there was a man by the name of Amerigo Vespucci that heard about what Columbus had done, and he was on an expedition in Brazil when he wrote a paper, and he said, Columbus didn't really discover a new trade route to India. He discovered a brand new continent. And there was a map maker by the name of Walter uh, or Martin Waltz Miller. Martin Waltz Miller. And he said, if that's true, and if Columbus has discovered a new continent, and Amerigo Vespucci says it's a new continent, then why don't we name it after him? And so the map has a name. You know what that name is? Amerigo Vespucci, and they named this new continent what? America. Vespucci. No, no, not really. <laughs> they named it America after Amerigo Vespucci. Now I say, what is significant about that? A man that never set foot on this continent, but the man after whom this continent was named was a born-again, blood-washed, converted Jew. There is a Jewish-American connection that you don't read about in the history book. Somebody say amen. amen. Would, would you like to hear more about it? Really? These converted Jews were instrumental in establishing the colonies. The Puritan founding fathers of this nation believed that they were the spiritual heirs of the Old Testament. And even though they were from England, they called themselves the fellow Jewish travelers. They called the Bay Colonies the New Jerusalem. John Cotton, governor of Massachusetts, wanted to adopt the Mosaic Law of the Old Testament as the code of law for Massachusetts. And isn't it sad and ironic that in Massachusetts, gay marriage is legal today? The Constitution of the United States is replete with references to the laws of the Old Testament. And regardless what people would tell you, this nation was, uh, was founded upon the Word of God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. The United States is that nation to which God has transferred spiritual kingdom authority in the last days. Now what is spiritual kingdom authority? The nation of Israel was the seat of that kingdom authority in the Old Testament. An angel of the Lord appeared to a little 16-year-old virgin by the name of Mary and said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bear a son and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall be great and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. In Matthew 6, Jesus taught us how to pray, and he said, Pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Now, he made it clear that the kingdom of God was within the heart and life of every believer. And yet, even though Paul says it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, there is coming a day when that kingdom will be established on this earth earth and we are going to rule and reign with Christ. If there is a center or a headquarters for this spiritual kingdom in the earth, it must of necessity be in the midst of a nation of believers. And I want you to know that regardless of what you see on the 6 o'clock news or what you read in the newspaper, America is still Christian America. You see, America is synonymous with Christianity. And if you look in the book of Revelation, as I have many times, to try to find a nation that resembles America, you'll discover that it's just not there. I mean, it's not there. Are these the last days? I believe they are. If these are the last days, then surely we ought to see a nation in the book of Revelation that, that looks like America, that somehow even vaguely resembles it, and I just can't find it. And yet there's a good reason. I believe that God is about to honor the covenant that was made with our forefathers and 200 years of Christian witness, and He's about to send a Holy Ghost revival that will burn out of control in America. 
I believe it's going to spread like a wind-driven prairie wildfire through America, and it will result, listen to this, in the conversion of your children, your husband, your wife, your loved ones, your parents, your family members, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, and eventually when the Lord comes back, I believe He's going to rapture this nation. Hallelujah! I believe that with all my heart. Now, I know what people are saying. They say, oh, you don't need to get excited about that because America is just like any other nation. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. I, I, I don't believe that. See, I know about the perversion and the filth of 42nd Street and Times Square in New York City. And I know about San Francisco. But between New York City and San Francisco... In the cornfields of Nebraska, in the foothills of Kentucky, and in the mountains of West Virginia, from Montana to Miami, there are millions of born-again, blood-washed, spirit-filled believers who believe in the power of God. They believe that God is God all by Himself, and Jesus Christ is Lord. They believe that this book I hold in my hand is God's comprehensive, infallible revelation to man. They believe it could be no more accurate, no more authoritative had God penned it with his own hand. And this book declares that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. You and I are about to experience a great revival in America. An unprecedented move of the Holy Spirit. Ghost. How many of you want to see that in your lifetime? I want you to stand with me, please. We're going to pray here, and I want to tell you who are watching by television, God has included you. If you can watch this, if you can see this, if you know what's going on, if you can hear me, God has included you. You're not left out. God wants to do a work in the earth. One last time, God wants to pour out His Spirit. I am sick and tired of what I see in our country. I am sick and tired of the filth and the pornography. I'm sick and tired of the drug addiction. I'm sick and tired of the alcoholism. I'm sick and tired of the depression. I'm sick and tired of seeing homes broken up and little children uh, trying to deal with mom and daddy split up and left the family and, 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 and is shattered. I'm sick and tired of hearing people talk about how that life is miserable and there's no hope and there's nothing worth living for. I'm telling you, God is about to do a work in your life and in your home and in this country. And I believe that this is our finest hour as Americans. Now, I got to tell you, there is no other country, there is no other land. You might say, oh, well, the Lord's blessing over in Europe. He's blessing in Africa. The Lord's blessing everywhere. But there is no other country, no other country that has the spiritual heritage of America. And as America goes, so goes the rest of the world. I don't want to be like Europe. Did you know that in England, our mother country, that less than 2% of the population attends church on Sunday? The truth is that there are false religions that have taken over in some of these countries, countries that one time claimed that they obeyed the Word of God and loved God and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, but because of their apathy, uh, they've been taken over by cults and false doctrines. It's time for us to stand up and have a backbone. Somebody said, well, I'm involved in, in, uh, in my school, my children's school, and I'm involved in, in government, but I don't like to make waves. Oh, I do. I think it's time to make some waves. I think it's time to stand up and speak out and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I think it's time for us to say, God send a revival to America. Amen. We're going to pray here, and I want you to pray with us. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want you to join hands with me, everybody. Take somebody by the hand. And out there watching me by television, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I'm praying a prayer for revival in America. Will you agree with me? Let's pray together. Come on, pray this prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will send revival to America. Save the lost. Restore backsliders. Draw us close to you as we repent of our national sins. Have your way in our lives. Pour out your spirit in the land 
and will give you the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. If you won't pray, you call that number on your screen. We're going to pray for you again. God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I believe when you prayed with me, God heard and answered that prayer. I know that you had a witness of the Holy Spirit. And now you need to call the number on your screen. Do it now, please, because somebody's waiting to hear from you. And we want to know about what God has done for you. And the Bible declares that you're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. So you need to share it with somebody. Please let us know about what God has done in your life. And then I'd love to send you something that will help you in your Christian walk. Now, you know, the most important thing in your life after you receive Christ is to find a church home. And I'm talking about a church where Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm talking about a church where the God that we've preached is served. I'm talking about a church where the Spirit of the living God has His way. I'm talking about a church where the power of the blood is preached. I'm talking about a church that believes in the gospel. And Victory Tabernacle is that kind of church. So I want to recommend to you Victory Tabernacle. And here's what I want you to know. Every week, we're right here. 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday is our praise celebration, and it's exciting. It's spirit-filled. It's anointed. Great singing and music and worship and always a time in the presence of God around the altar. And I bring a message from God's Word that will change your life. And the last Sunday in every month, the last Sunday, there are two services, 10 a.m., and then a 7 p.m. miracle service because we still believe in the power of God to heal. We believe in the miraculous. Then on Wednesday evening, you can find us here for our family enrichment night service that begins promptly at 7 o'clock. We have Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens and young adults. And as always, I'm teaching in the main sanctuary. It's fun, it's exciting, it's relevant. And at 8.30, we're going to be walking out the door because we're very conscious of the time. And we want to pack everything that we can that will enrich and bless your life in that short period of time. So be sure to join us for Family Enrichment Night Service right here at Victory Tabernacle. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. I really appreciate it. I want you to know that it's important to me that you call. I want to hear from you. So please call that number on your screen. And until we're together again, just like this, around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. And I'll be looking for you. Everyone struggles from time to time. It could be the loss of a loved one, the unmistakable feeling of loneliness and rejection. Maybe we're looking for a friendly smile or a warm hug from someone who really cares. us when we're hurting and when we're broken. He hears our cries and comes to us at our point of need. Jesus never rejected anyone and neither do we at Victory Tabernacle, the place you've been looking for.
Oh, why don't you give it? And let Jesus, and let my Jesus take over. Take over. gonna make a way for you. Now look here. Well, if you got some mountains that you, you can't climb. Oh, and if you got the valley that you, that you can't stand. Oh, and if you got a burden too hard to bear, oh, let Jesus, why don't you let Jesus hold on, hold to your hand. Come on, Give us a and let Jesus, come on, y'all help us. Take on, take on, over. Why don't you give it up and let Jesus, and let Jesus take over? Give us and let Jesus take over. Jesus, take over. 